Hello and welcome back. I'm going to have a look at a kind of addition, if you like, to my GMKFC modded video or mod video that I did recently. Um, and I was asked in a comment on a comment in one of the videos, can't remember which one it was, um, but uh, how to go about adding in Colk to a map, possibly for the function of the GMK setup, GMKFC setup, and the rest of it. So I'm going to talk about the scripts that I'm going to be using, or the scripts I'm going to be using to add the line, cult, whatever you want to call it, into the map, and what we need to change to get it all working and whatever else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the actual GMKFC mod script here first of all, just hopefully so you can get an idea of what this is all, how this is set up. Now, this particular mod registers the fill type as Colk, as you can see here we've got Colk home, and down here as well, and then we've got, if we scroll down a bit further, we've got a fill type of Colk. So what we actually need to do is set up our new fill type that we're going to add into the map in the same way, because if we look at the additional map types script that I'm using here, if we actually go into here and we look in the example for the mob desk, you can come down to the parts where it registers the actual fill types and fruit types. It is registered as a fill type of lime, not Colk. So if we were to go ahead and continue registering this into the map as lime, then the GMKFC mod would not know what it was. It wouldn't recognize it. So it then wouldn't apply that particular texture to the ground when we sprayed it. So we don't want that because obviously then that would make that part of the GMKFC mod null and void. So we would need to make a couple of changes with this, with the entire map structure to do with this additional map types script to obviously get it all to work. Now you can use the reg fill type script as well. Um, I'm not going to do that in this particular video, but um, this is the way I'm going to go with it. So hopefully that's going to work for you guys. Um, and the reason why I'm probably going to go down that road is because I've already used it to set up a couple of other additional fruit types on the map anyway. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, but it does mean I need to make quite a lot of changes and bits and pieces to obviously get all this working. Now I could use the reg fill types script but then I would have to set that up and show you how to get all the HUDs and all the rest of it for that so and we've already got it with the additional map types script all the HUDs and everything else are already there so it just to me seemed a little bit easier and because it's a script I'm already using why not go with it so if we actually look in our fill planes and all the rest of it so if we look in our fill planes not that one <clears throat> if we go into our P systems we've got our fill planes and our particle animations or particle systems We've got some parts in here that obviously um, display what we require on screen and uh, in our machinery. Now, obviously these have been set up as lime and not coke, so that's not going to really work for us. So we need to make a couple of changes here to make all of that do what we want to do, really. So if we open up the actual fill plane material holder here and <clears throat> go into our fill type, for the line, what we've got here, we need to go in our user attributes and we need to change that field type so it's registered as Colk because that's what we're going to actually be using for our GMKFC. So, relatively straightforward but a little bit time consuming, but you need to obviously understand where you need to go and what you need to change. So, we've changed our field types there for the Colk. The actual names in the Cinegraph won't make a difference, it's just the field type that it's looking for. So we need to change that. We're going to go ahead and save that one. Then we need to come into our particle systems. Now the actual cutter effects are not going to be relevant. We need to go into our effect map material holder here. And we're looking for anything to do with lime really. So we need to come into here. So we've got our unloading and we've got lime. So we need to change that. We need to go through all of these and change all of these to Colk. So we can just type it in, copy it, and then come down to the others and obviously change those as well. Now you will need to do this for every single section that has anything to do with line because or caulk because otherwise it won't be recognized. So we've done our unload and we'll come to smoke and we go into this one. So we need to change that one to caulk. Straw is not relevant. Chopper shouldn't be relevant. Spreader. Yes. So we need to come into here. Change that to caulk. Our pipe. We need to change that one. Belt. We need to change this one. And obviously our leveler we need to change as well. 
So we've changed all of those, we can go ahead and save that one. And then if we have anything in our particle map, oh that was particle map material holder. Yeah, that's right. So we need to do our particle map material holder if it has anything to do with that in it as well, which it may not. So we need to come into here, just double check this one. No, we don't need anything in there. So we can close that one down. So we just need to change the ones that are relevant to Lime for the additional map type stuff to work properly and also for the um, bits and pieces to work as well. So everything else can be left the same because it's just pointing towards different um, texture files. So they shouldn't be relevant. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing we need to change is our tip on ground because this is just located by the fill type itself. And we've obviously got lime and we don't want that. So what we need to do is go into here and change these. So we'll change that one to Colk. Do the same for the others as well. If we don't change these, it won't know what it's looking for. And it won't display anything and it'll cause an error. So we need to change that one. Go into our fruit cards, we need to change this one as well. Because this is a fill type and not a fruit type. It should be somewhere up here. There we go. So we need to change this one. Again, all of these are located by our the fill type itself, and it then looks for the name of the fill type in relation to the hut. So we need to change that one, that one. That should be all of them. And obviously, you can do a search. So if we do a search for lime, that's it. There's none more left. So we don't need anything else there. So we've changed our parts in our particle systems and fill planes. And we've changed our parts and our tip on ground and also our fruit cuts. Okay, so we should be pretty good there. So the next thing we need to do is obviously add in our parts to our mod desk for the map itself and to activate lime or coke as a fill type. So if we go into our additional map type stuff here, I'm using version 1.0.0.8. So we'll go into our example here. We'll come down to where it says lime. And we're going to obviously change that. So we come down to this, I'm going to copy that entire section with its tags, put that into the map L10N section here, and I'm going to change the name there to, whoops, to Kulk, like so. Then I'm going to come back over and I'm going to bring over the line that activates it in the map, so we copy that, come back over, come down to my additional map type section for the map itself and we're going to paste that in and then we're going to also change that if i can click on it we're going to change that to colk as well done there we go so now we've actually adapted all of the parts so the gmkfc mod will actually see it and register it as the correct fill type if we don't do that we don't change any of the tip on ground and the fruit huds everything will get a bit confused because it'll be looking for the wrong fill type and the wrong hud and the wrong everything else so we need to start off there okay so now that we've activated everything on the map itself and changed all the parts we need to change so it can be recognized correctly by all the different scripts that we're going to be using and obviously if you're not using the gmkfc mod that won't be relevant because it won't be required but if it's something you think about maybe you're going to add in later on then it might be worth doing this now before you start to get um, down that road and then can't figure out why it's not working correctly, it's not spraying the correct texture that you're looking for. So what we need to do now then is open up the map because I want to set up something on the map itself that's obviously going to give me my lime or colk, whatever you want to call it, whatever else. So I'll just wait for that to load up and then we'll be back. Okay, so the next part we need to do then is actually set up our silo trigger. So I've got this animated type of excavator here. This was part of the Farm Sim 15 version of the map. Um, I wasn't able to actually get the animations all working, whatever else. The script wasn't compatible with the actual um, with Farming Simulator 17, unfortunately, and I'm not a scripter, so couldn't quite figure out how to do that. But I figured, you know, I'd use it anyway and then set up a trigger and whatever else. And obviously, you don't need to go into this as much as I have. Um, if we come over to the farm here, because I need to be over here anyway. You could also apply the script or the sorry the the trigger to something like this if you wanted to or whatever else but keep it somewhat simpler but uh, i want to do it this way so i'm going to go with that okay so i need to have a couple parts here i need to have 
an actual unloading part with all the bits and pieces in here for my in trigger and whatever else so the only part i'm going to copy from here is just the actual trigger itself or the parts to do with the trigger so i'm going to make a duplication of the gameplay transform group here like so when it highlighted i'm going to control x to cut it i'm going to come down and i'm going to choose a part on the actual um, animated excavator to apply it to and i'm going to go control v to bring it into there like so if we come back up to our trigger here i also need the silo trigger part so again i'm going to make a duplication of that and then again with it highlighted in the cinegraph here i'm going to go control x come back down to my part on the excavator control v to paste it in okay so we just go over to it i'll press f and we zoom over to it like so so now what we need to do is obviously apply those parts to this area of the map <clears throat> so all i'm going to do here is i'm just going to highlight the gameplay part which is our silo in trigger here and all the bits and pieces that go with it all i'm going to do is i'm just going to rotate that so my rotate y i'm going to just go to 90 and i'm going to just bring it over put it somewhere relevant to the actual excavator that will be fine uh, it needs to be within a certain radius of your output trigger and i'll show you what that means when we get into the xml <clears throat> and obviously you could bury that part under the mat i'm not going to be using that part and as far as that goes if, if unless anybody actually knows it's there it will just be there and nobody will ever see it so it won't really be relevant next part obviously i need to bring over is the actual silo trigger itself so i'm going to bring that into position underneath my shovel here so i can get all my animations and particle systems and whatever else working the way i want them to work so we'll apply that somewhat centralized again for the video it's not that important but you know once you're doing it for your map you might want to be a bit more sort of you know finesse it a bit better than i am here sorry about the zooming around i've got a really bad mouse mat so i want to be able to bring this down so that my equipment can hit the trigger otherwise it won't work but i have a particle effect attached to this trigger i don't want it to start all the way down there i want it to start somewhere up at the top here so if we actually open up the cube here we've got a transform group called effect and where the gizmo shows there that is where the start of the effect will be displayed on screen so what i want to do is i want to bring that up into my shovel itself so the particle animation or particle effect whatever you want to call it starts within the shovel itself okay fantastic now obviously you can make this <coughs> change this to whatever you wanted to change it to have a play around with that but um, it will automatically be set up by your particle animations or particle systems that were brought over from the additional map type stuff so we'll just leave that alone and go with whatever it gives us um, we need to make a couple of changes within our bits and pieces here so if i go into the actual trigger position which is our would be our input i need to change this so i'm going to change this to colk silo then i'm going to go into my silo trigger my out we've got all our parts there but if we actually click on silo trigger zero two this is our storage position for that trigger so we need to change the capacity per type because i don't want it to be just a hundred thousand i want it to be a lot more than that i want to be able to get a lot more out of it so I'm going to change this to 999, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 999 million litres of that particular fill type. And obviously we don't want wheat and all the rest of it. So I need to overwrite those with coke, whoops, in lowercase, like so. I'm going to change my storage ID, so I'm going to change this. So it's storage underscore coke. Hit the tab key, lock it in. Perfect. Now I've got my fill capacity. <clears throat> per the type which is our colk we've created a new storage id which is our storage underscore colk which will be important later on and everything there now is set up exactly how we need it to be next thing we need to do with our trigger position highlighted here in the cinegraph we need to apply this information to our mat01.xml so if we go into here open up our mat01.xml it might not be called that it might be called something different just identify the one that you need to work with which will look like this 
or similar to this anyway. So I'm just going to take a copy of a solo trigger that I already have on this map, which I've set up. I'm going to create a couple of lines and I'm going to paste that in. And obviously we need to match our index to what we have on the map. So I'm going to take the index from there, come back over into our map 01.i3d, sorry, map 01.xml, and I'm going to paste that into there like so. I'm going to change the actual station name. And I'm going to call this Colk Quarry. I've probably spelled that wrong, but that's fine. Um, I'm also going to change my storage radius. Now, storage radius is the distance between your input and your output trigger. So if you have a lot of different storage places on the map and they're in close proximity to each other, but they all have different field types, then you need to adjust your storage radius because otherwise each one of the storage facilities will show up something that it doesn't actually have in it and won't accept so i'm going to actually reduce this to 50 um, even though i haven't got anything near it i might put something in later on so i'm just going to bring it down you might need to play around with that number a little bit until you find a sweet spot where it will work and not be affected by anything else i'm just going to leave it at 50 and i'm also going to highlight all of those apart from the last one and delete them and i'm going to change this one to a fill type of coke because obviously that's what we want to work with um, I don't want it to be a peer on PDA because it's a storage facility so it'd be pointless um, it is an area trigger it's not a cell point it doesn't support any of the other stuff so that's fine and we don't want it to support extension don't need that so that's fine um, so we're just going to leave everything as it is so we just click save and we'll close that down okay so the next thing I need to do here is with all the rest of these parts all set up as I need them to be I'm going to literally start the game I'm going to put the map in my mods folder I'm going to start the game I'm then going to save it save the game so it creates my new save game and I'm going to take some information from there and that's what I'm going to show you next so I've put the mod the actual map in the mod folder opened the game loaded the map up saved it exited straight back out again I've created a new save game, save game 4, which gives me my information I need here. So what I've got is my vehicles.xml. So I'm going to open up that in Notepad++. I'm going to bring up my find window. And I'm going to type in Kolk, if I can spell it. There we go. And I'm going to click find. <clears throat> and the reason why I searched for that is because earlier on in the video, we actually set up our storage for the Kolk silo as storage underscore Kolk. This takes me to where I need to get to. So we've got some information in here for that particular silo trigger. So what I need to do is take all of that information from there, including the tags. I'm going to make a copy of that. I'm going to come back into my map here. And I'm going to go to the default vehicles.xml. And obviously I've all, all I've got in the default vehicles is my lizard pickup. And obviously, possibly for you guys, There'll be a lot more information here of the vehicles that are on the map. But just find a place that you want to put it into. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's below the career vehicles or, uh, sorry, the below this career vehicles tag here or above this one. Uh, you can put it pretty much anywhere you want. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a line there and I'm just going to paste that information in. And then what I want to do is I need to change the fill level in here to 999 million. So when I start a new game save, it starts off with that storage area being full up with that amount. And then I need to go save. I'm going to close that down. And I can also close that down. Now when I start a new game save, I will actually start off the game with that amount in there. So if we shut all that down, what I'll do is I'll go into game now. And I will actually go into game so you can see. And we should have 999 million litres of coal in that silo, which we can then access. So I'll see you when we get in the game. So you can see that I'm not actually doing anything, you know, other than what I'm saying I'm doing here. I've literally just started the game up. We're going to go save game four because I've deleted the last one because I don't need it anymore. So we're just going to go save game four. We're going to start on easy and we're going to go into the Manchester map. I've got only one additional um, mod, which is the console extension, so I can give myself some money to start off with to get some inf uh, some equipment and whatever. 
So we'll start the map up here, like so, and I'm just going to bring up the actual console command, and I'm just going to add in a various amount of money, like so, that'll do. And I'm just going to buy a tractor. Oops. Need to get a new mouse map. Let's just do that, like so. And then I will get a fertilizer spreader. That's fine. So we'll do that. And then what I'll do is I'll go over to the quarry and then we can test out the triggers. So I'll see when we get over there. Right, so we're here at the quarry now. We're going to test out the trigger. So if I just open this up, I'll bring up my F1 menu. And if we then drive into where I place the actual trigger, we get our start fill. Excellent. So if I press R, we got our animation, particle system, whatever you want to call it which is why I put it where it was up in the bucket so it doesn't look out of place and we are obviously filling up with our with our lime coke, whatever you want to call it okay excellent, one thing I want to show you if we go into the escape menu here if we come over you can actually see our fill amount it does go down because it's a storage facility but by putting 999 million in there you know chances of people actually using that amount in a game save is going to be I would imagine probably impossible but you can see that we do start with our 999 million minus what I've already taken out of it. So that's how you start a new game save with you know, a complete, completely full up silo. So what I'll do is I'll go over to a field and I'll just show you that it does work with the GMKFC um, by changing those parts in the material holders and whatever else. So I'll see when we get into a field. So we'll just test this out now, so if I just drive into the field here, press for B to activate and there we go, we got our GMKFC animation or particles or whatever you want to call them onto the field itself and it is fertilising the field. Fantastic. If we actually look in the escape menu here, <coughs> we go across. You can see it does actually fertilise the field. It's all part of the GMKFC, which I've done a separate video, but I just wanted to show you what you need to actually change to get all of those parts working. You can add the lime in as it is standard from the additional map types, but obviously because the GMKFC is looking for a fill type of cult, if you don't change all of those parts, then that won't show up properly. So there's that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to show you the next part of how we can do this. and um, a different, slightly different way you can use both of them, it doesn't really matter but a slightly different way of doing this perhaps that might be you know, might be uh, more your style or whatever else so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down get back in a giant editor and then we'll have a look at that as well, so see you then so as you can see here we've got uh, some raised up areas over here and all the rest of it now what I want to do is I want to give myself a second option here of how I can possibly go about collecting my coke line, whatever. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove all of these parts here, these textures and everything else, to give me the area that I want to work with. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that one down. I'm going to go into my train editing window here and <clears throat> I can never remember what these are called, but we'll just go through them and hopefully remove what we need to remove. So we'll click on our train foliage thingy here and we'll just remove what we need to remove. So we've done that one. We'll just go through a lot of them, just make sure that we actually hopefully get everything we need to get rid of. So we'll just go around there like so, and then we'll do the next one. So it's just about getting rid of you know everything that we don't really want, like so. Now this particular map has got a lot of different uh, foliage, static foliage sort of uh, parts, stuff you can't actually harvest, you know, decorative sort of uh, foliage, whatever I call it. So we'll just make sure, hopefully, we can get rid of all of these. 
what I'll do is I'll pause the video here. Once I've got rid of all those, I'll come back. So the next part here, I obviously want to change a couple of textures because I don't want the grass there. So I'm going to go into my train detail texture paint mode. I'm going to change this over and I don't know which one it is. We'll just have to see what's what. That's gravel, so I don't want that. Uh, beach sand, yeah, that's the one. So I've changed a lot of these textures. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to overwrite the grass with the kind of limeish texture, if you like. So we'll just do this. And this will be my area that I want to create to put my lime down into. Like so. Might add a bit more grass into there just to give it a bit of a... Uh, border if you like that'll be fine okay so the next thing we need to do here then is quite important because I only want to be able to put this down in certain areas I don't want to tip it all over the place and have it all up beside the hills here and whatever else so what I need to do here then is actually create a tip curl around this particular area so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll down to my info layer painting and I'm going to go to tip coal and I'm going to click on, click on my train info layer paint mode. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paint around the edge of the area here so that I can't actually tip the line, caulk, whatever, in certain areas. This will hopefully then prevent that from happening. I'm just going to do this really roughly for the video, but obviously again, as always, you would need to sort of finesse this a little bit if you're doing it for yourself, you know, for your own map or whatever else. So we'll just come around, put this over here. Don't want anything being tipped over there or anything like that. And I don't want anything to be tipped in this area in the middle here. So we'll just do this. And then this last little bit just here, that'll be fine. Again, for the video at least. If I was doing this, you know, for reels, so to speak, I would do it a lot better than this. But, um, okay, so now that we've got a tip curl set up, what I need to do then is go into Scripts, FS17, Map, Create Ground Collision Map. So I'm going to click on that. It takes a little while. So I'll pause the video and we'll come back once that's finished. Oh, no. Is it still doing it? Yeah, it's still doing it. Hold on one sec. So we've created our collision on the map, as it says down in the console, saving collision map, all the rest of it. So now we will not be able to tip any of our lime in that area, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I want. So <clears throat> I can now click off of that, deactivate that. Excellent. Next thing I want to do is obviously I want to have a relatively flattish area to work with to tip my lime onto. It's no point in having all these hills and bumps and whatever else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find a relatively sort of flattish area over here will be fine. I think that looks okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. We'll try and match it in best we can to the area itself. So I'm going to come back up and I need to change my left mouse button here to replace. And I'm going to click on my train sculpt mode. And then what I need to do is actually select an area, paying attention to this replace number select an area with my gizmo that I want to match the height of the rest of it. So I'm going to press Control R, which is my replace picking tool, Control R. So put my gizmo on the area, Control R, and that then changed to zero, which is what the ground height is, I guess, on that area. So that's fine. So then with my replace selected, all I need to do is just literally go over the area itself that I want to level off making sure I don't go outside of that area. So 
something like that. So now I've got a nice flat area to work with here with my tip coal in place so when I tip the caulk into the actual area here it won't be able to go down anywhere else but where I've actually said it can if you like. So this is the t this is the part that obviously gets a bit time consuming so I will do a little bit and then I will do some off camera so to speak so you can see what I'm doing but then I won't bore you with too much of it so we'll save get back into game and I'll show you what we're going to do next. So we're in game here again now and I've come over to the trigger same as we did with the fertilizer spreader and lime spreader whatever we'll call it but this time I've got a truck and trailer set up because what I need to do is actually fill this up with the caulk line whatever you want to call it and actually tip it onto the area I've created over there my flat area that I need created over there <clears throat> now this is as I said before a very long process because you obviously want to put down a considerable amount um, so that people aren't going to run out very very quickly like I did with this particular trigger here I set up 999 billion liters of the line so theoretically um, you know you wouldn't ever use that amount just for fertilizing fields uh, especially if you're using the GMK FC mod because for me at least you want to sort of mix things up a little bit use some lime use some fertilizer perhaps maybe the liquid manure and soy manure and whatever else the different textures that are going to be displayed on the on the fields but okay so <clears throat> what we need to do then because I've obviously set up my tip coals theoretically if everything has worked correctly this will only tip in certain places which is exactly what I want so so it doesn't you know go up the side of the uh, cliff side there or whatever you want to call it so we need to use the tip anywhere function here there goes the train so control i and we're just going to tip our line here now as i said before this is the bit where it gets a bit tricky and i've got stuck already <laughs> i haven't got a drive control in so you need to obviously move along with the line so it comes out and all the rest of it and you might need to stop it and then reposition and whatever else so like i said this is the part where it gets really time consuming you may even need to come in with your wheel loader possibly a level or something like that and level it all off each time you do it I'm not going to do too much of this I'm just going to show you the principle behind it and then you can work with that so I'll just straighten up my tractor and the uh, trailer here a bit so I can do a kind of a run if you like with it and we'll see what we end up with it's very difficult to get it exactly where you want it but so we'll try and do a bit of a run here with this you may even want to obviously get hold of a uh, trailer that has got a much larger capacity than the standard in-game setup so what I'll do is I will put down a considerable amount of lime off camera and then I'll come back once I've done all that and then we'll have a look and see what we've got and then go from there Okay, so after quite a while, um, I've put down a considerable amount of lime here. Uh, I'm going to stop now and I'll just show you what I'm going to do next because this takes forever. It does take a long time. It is, it, once you get it done and it's finished, it's really well worth doing it. But for video purposes, I would have all this entire area filled up if I was actually doing this for reals. But um, as for the video kind of thing, I'm just going to go with what I've got there and hopefully you know this will prove what you need to do prove the point and show you what to do so I've put down quite a lot I've actually got a um, a trailer here I don't know if it's this one or it might be this one I think it might be this one actually I actually um, <clears throat> made my own so to speak and uh, I think it holds something like two million I can't remember now it holds quite a lot uh, 200,000 I don't know one two three yeah, 200,000, sorry. So it holds 200,000, I think that's 200,000. So it holds quite a lot, uh, and I've put down two of those, plus a little bit extra. So there's quite a lot of lime there, or caulk, whatever you want to call it, um, tipped on the ground. So, you know, you would select your area where you're going to put it, like I've already done. Put your tip coals in so it's not going to, you know, you can't tip it outside of the area. Now, unlike a, your bunker silos, 
or your clamps or whatever you want to call it for your BGA because there's no sides to this the height will only go up so far it won't continue to keep going up and up and up uh, because there's nothing to hold it in all it does is just spread out to the sides so you will only be able to put so much in at a certain height which is a bit of a shame but you know that's just the way it is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the game here I just wanted to show you it in game as it was so you can see it you know as I've completed it I did actually get a wheel loader I tried it with the um, shovel and it didn't seem to want to play play the part at least not leveling it out the way I wanted to so <clears throat> as I was trying to empty it out the way that the tip on ground sort of function works which is a bit freaky in my opinion uh, it was trying to fill the bucket up as I was trying to tip it out so I ended up getting a leveler anyway and just kind of smoothing it off a little bit just so I could keep my area that I wanted to put my next load down um, clear of anything if you know what I mean so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the game and you can see there obviously I've taken a considerable amount out you can work that out for yourself if you see to if you want to how much I've actually put on the ground so far uh, so we'll go ahead and save and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out and we'll go back on the desktop and I'll show you what we need to do next so we're back out on the desktop again and we need to take some another file from our save game so that when we actually then start a new game save we end up with the line that we tipped onto the ground already there at the beginning of the new game save and the one that we need here is the terrain detail height underscore density dot gdm so if we actually open up our map here and then go into maps map 01 we'll have exactly the same file in here terrain detail height underscore density dot gdm so all you need to do is take the one from your save game make a copy of that come into your map 01 folder and paste over that one and then what you can actually do here is if you want to make sure that it's actually worked if you go into the map through Giants Editor, um, it will actually show you on the map. It will look weird, and I'll show you what I mean when we get to it. But it will look weird, but uh, it will actually give you an indication that it's going to work before you even go into game. So we'll just give this a second to load up. I won't pause it because it shouldn't take too long to do this. And you can then zoom in, and you can see, as I say, it shows up really weird because it's just the way the game recognises it. But there you go. We now have our line or what will be lying in the map right at the get, get go and you can see that in the giant editor uh, even though it doesn't look like line now it will do once we get into game so you can see that don't save it just exit out and then what i'll do is i'll go back into game we'll start a new game save again i'll show you that i'm going to start a new game save again and we'll be able to then literally go straight in and take our line from either of those points either the trigger um, or where we, we can uh, pick it up with a wheel loader or whatever else or convey about and all the rest of it so we'll get back in the game and we'll have a look at that so just so you can see again and I'm not doing anything behind the scenes or whatever else we're going to start a whole new game save game save 5 we'll do easy again Manchester map and we'll go through again uh, apart from my trailer I had in with the um, larger capacity and the console extension I've got no other mods or anything like that so we'll go start, we'll get into the map, and then we'll have a drive over there and I'll show you the uh, the lime and everything else. So we'll just use this, that's fine. I'll probably crash this several times but uh, in the process. So this is Manchester V5. Um, I'm not sure if I've already stated or not at the beginning of the video, but uh, Reaper9111 saw my videos that I did on the V4 version of this. So contacted me unfortunately YouTube being YouTube decided to put his comment in my spam folder or flagged it for for whatever reason so I didn't catch it but eventually he managed to get hold of me which was uh, really great because he then gave me permission to convert the map or whatever else so uh, again I'm not sure if I already stated or not I don't have permission to upload this uh, it's really on him to do so um, that's the promise I made to him when I so I would like to convert it and all the rest of it so please don't ask and if you do ask it will just be a no because <laughs> I can't uh, simple as that really so anyway we're over here and we still have our standard trigger here no problem excellent and voila we have our line in the map at the start of a brand new game save ready to go so I won't get a wheel loader or whatever else and, and things like that um, it's pretty straightforward it's just going to be what you would normally find if you tipped it on the ground in a game save this is exactly what you'd have but 
this is here now at the beginning of a start you know of a, of a brand new game save so the idea would be that uh, you would fill this entire area up or whatever area on your map that you're going to be working with completely fill it up with as much as you can get in there um, you know several million liters of the of the lime and then you're not going to run out really you know theoretically with 999 liters 999 million liters in there if you chose to go both ways whichever and then x amount of liters of um you know millions of liters of lime on the floor here as well you know it gives you the opportunity to then use that so as a starting point perhaps maybe if you're playing on hard this would give you the ability to fertilize your fields straight off without having to purchase your lime and uh, your fertilizer and whatever else till you get your cows up and running and then you can use your slurry and i think it's a really nice addition with the gmkfc mod you've got this right off the bat um, and it's a way of getting it into the map which is as i already hopefully stated this is what i was asked how do you get colk or lime into a map this is how i would do it this is how i have done it uh, this for me i think works really really well uh, like i said earlier on you could always just have a standard sort of um, uh, whatever you want to call it barrel or whatever at your main farm plant a couple of those around the map but for me i think this works really nice you know you can um, pick it up from here and then cut it around the map wherever you want add in your points if you want to in various places for other storage so you take it from here then put it um, you know in, in various different storage places around the map either using the similar method to what i've done here or using something like the fabric script to set up something and whatever else and if you you know want to go down that road you can always possibly get a mod that creates lime from various different products on the map and then bring it back to the add to this um whatever so there we go how to get lime slash colk into a map set it all up so you can have different functionalities either through the tip on ground function where you start the map with x amount on the ground and then just use your wheel loader and whatever else to pick it up or have a trigger where you can just drive under and load it automatically or you know by pressing the r key and go from there so hopefully this is what you know um this has answered questions and uh, you know things like that maybe more questions than intended uh, but uh, yeah i think it's going to you know give you options there to have a play around with and create some really you know fancy sort of stuff doesn't have to be lime it can be anything you want to tip on the ground obviously the the time involved to get into a game and then collect it up tip it into an area and whatever else perhaps maybe if you wanted to have manure you could get some cows up together um, and then go in to your xml vehicle xml cheating x amount of manure um, to your cows and then go from there whatever you know or buy a buy a placeable manure purchase point reduce the price scale to zero so it doesn't cost you anything and then keep, keep taking out there on a conveyor belt with a trailer which has got a really large capacity tip it around in an area on the map and then follow my instructions here which have hopefully explained well enough for people to copy and then you can start off a map with a large manure pile somewhere there's possibilities you know you can have um, your silage clamps full up at the beginning of the game with chaff so they just need to be fermented or whatever you want to do really just you know experiment play around and see what you can come up with anyway i'm going to end it there thanks very much for watching and uh, catch you on the next one